Hey there! In this video, I want to be testing out the low light or high ISO performance of the Nikon Z6 Mark III. I will be comparing the Nikon Z6 III with the Canon R5C, the Fuji X-H2S, and the Blackmagic 6K full frame because these are the cameras that I have. Now, people always ask me for other comparisons, but I'm only one person here. I can only own so many cameras, and I can't borrow very much at one time, and camera companies don't send me cameras. But I had to have a huge thank you and shout out to b &H Photo who lent me the Nikon Z6 Mark III to test out, review, and make videos like this for all of you. If you are looking to pick up some camera gear, please go check out b &H. It's where I bought most of my stuff from. They have been an absolute huge supporter of the channel and making videos like this possible. There are links in the description for the Z6 Mark III and all the gear that I use on a regular basis. So there are a few things that I want to mention before we get into the detailed testing, which we'll get into later on the video. The first thing is about noise reduction because noise reduction can play a big part in the high ISO performance of any camera. So we'll start off by talking about the Nikon Z6 III. In the two RAW modes, both in NRAW and ProRes RAW HQ, there is no noise reduction applied and you cannot change that. If you're in the other modes, the ProRes 422 HQ 10-bit or the H.265 10-bit, there is noise reduction applied and you cannot change it. So whatever Nikon has decided to apply in terms of noise reduction and that algorithm, you can't change it, it's baked in. In the Canon R5C, there is no noise reduction applied in RAW, just like it is in the Z6 Mark III and those RAW codecs. But if you're shooting in the XFAVC or MP4 codecs, you can go in here and change the noise reduction settings. So what I decided to do for this test here was to leave the noise reduction settings to its automatic. I think that's the fairest way to compare this with the automatic noise reduction that's in the Z6 Mark III. If you're curious about the Canon R5C and the noise reduction settings that I recommend, I made a detailed video about that and I'll leave that video linked down below. In terms of the Blackmagic 6K full frame, well, there is a noise reduction since you are shooting in B-RAW. So on the X-H2S, I have the high ISO noise reduction set to zero, which is its default setting. I generally set it to negative four, but for this test, I wanted to leave it at zero so it'd be comparable with the Z6 Mark III. And I left the intraframe noise reduction set to off. The next thing I want to mention about these cameras is their dual base ISOs. So the Z6 Mark III has a dual base ISO of 800 and 6400 when you're shooting in analog. The R5C is 800 and 3200. The X-H2S is a single base ISO of 1250. And the Blackmagic 6K full frame has dual bases at 400 and 3200. But the second gain stage actually kicks in at 1250, but the actual second base ISO is 3200. So if you're not familiar with that, it is a little bit different than some of the other cameras. So to get the exposure dialed in on these cameras, I use the proper exposure on a gray card based on the camera manufacturer's recommendations. So on the Z6 Mark III, I set the zebras at 95, and it's kind of a weird number, but it is a scale from zero to 255 in the camera. I got this information directly from Nikon, and I've mentioned this in several other videos. On the X-H2S, I set the zebras to 38% IRE, and then on the R5C and the Blackmagic 6K full frame, I used false color. So the tests that I'm gonna show you in just a moment are actually very technical. They are not real world examples. These are to look at the performance of these cameras at their higher ISOs. There are a lot of misconceptions about how this test works and about low light performance in general. You still need to expose a camera properly to test a camera at a given ISO. Just because you go out and shoot at an ISO and then raise the exposure in post, you're not testing it at the given ISO, you're stretching the image. So after setting the exposure properly, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, I then raise the ISO while increasing the shutter speed to keep proper exposure at every ISO. And I use the same lens on all the cameras. I use the Sigma Art EF 20 millimeter lens and I have adapters for all the cameras. In terms of grading, I use the color space transforms and resolve to bring all of the images into a rec seven on color space, but in the respective log profiles. And then graded the log image by hand to add contrast and saturation to get them to match as close as I could, but I'm definitely not going for color matching here. Now there are a lot of recording modes, resolutions and codecs in the Z6 Mark III. And I had to choose a few to compare in this video, just like I did in the dynamic range video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave that video link down below. I will take a deeper dive into the raw codecs and how they compare in a future video, but I had to make a choice on just a couple that made the most sense for these comparisons. All right, first up is the Nikon Z6 Mark III and the 6K NRAW HQ versus the Canon R5C's 8.2K RAW ST. Now, I always record all the ISOs to see if anything interesting is going on, and you're looking at the whole ISO range here. Remember, there is no noise reduction going on here with the RAW codecs. I think the Z6 III is slightly cleaner in the low ISO range. 
Remember the R5C kicking in right here at 3200. When it hits the second base ISO, it kicks in and it is definitely cleaner in this range of 4000 and 5000. But keep an eye here when you hit 6400, which happens right here. The second base ISO of the Z6 Mark III kicks in and is then cleaner. The Z63 stays cleaner all the way up, and I think it does pretty well. So noise as expected, but a good performance from the Z63. The R5C is not known to be an exceptionally good low light camera, but it does well in the middle ISO range with the second base at 3200. I personally prefer a second base at 3200 or 4000 like in the R5C because I find it to be more useful and versatile. 6400 is quite a bit higher, but the Z63 in my opinion does pretty well in that mid in that higher ISO range after the uh, second base kicks in at 6400. Next up is the Nikon Z63 in its 4K H.265 10-bit mode against the R5C's 4K XFAVC. So these are the compressed codecs, and these do have noise reduction baked in. You can immediately see this even at the lower ISOs. If you look at the 400% zoomed in section of the Nikon, it looks blockier and smearier, sort of less fine. Here's the R5C kicking in at 3200, it's second base ISO. It looks significantly better here in my opinion than the Z6 Mark III at 4000 and 5000. Keep an eye here when the Nikon kicks in its second base ISO at 6400. It cleans up quite a bit. I actually think the R5C looks better here in the high ISO range. I would say this has to do with the noise reduction and how they compare in the two cameras since it was the opposite story in the raw codex. So taking a look up here at the higher ISO range, I think, like I said, I think the R5C does a better job in cleaning up the noise in camera with the noise reduction. Now, of course, you can always apply noise reduction in post, and I recommend that people experiment with that with the RAW codex, but I wanted to take a look at comparing the Z63 6K NRAW HQ against the 4K H.265 10-bit. These are the two modes that I just tested against the R5C, and you can clearly see a difference here between the two codecs. The noise looks very different if you're looking at that 400% zoomed in section. The 10-bit H.265 has that blockier, smearier look, and the, the raw codec is a lot finer. Also looking at the MM chart at the bottom of the 400% zoomed in section, you can see that the H.265 10-bit codec is a little bit softer, and both of these were shot with the camera at the same spot with the same focus. I didn't change anything when I just switched modes. I also have to say that the colors look pretty similar here uh, between the two codecs, which is pretty cool to see other than the effects of the noise that you're seeing here, but I just wanted to demonstrate the differences here in the camera using RAW and the baked in noise reduction in the H.265 10-bit. Next up, we have the Z63 in its 6K NRAW HQ against the Blackmagic 6K full frame in three to one. Remember it has base ISOs of 400 and 3200, but the second gauge change just kicking in there at 1250. Now, I don't expect the Blackmagic to do well here since I've previously tested the Blackmagic full frame and I made videos about that. I'll leave that down below. And it's really not known for being a very good camera at the higher ISOs. It gets pretty messy. And what's actually interesting here is the Blackmagic hangs in there really well against the Z6 Mark III, in my opinion, at the lower ISOs. Of course, when you hit 6400, and the second base ISO kicks in of the Z6 III, you see really how bad the Blackmagic camera does in the higher ISOs. Uh, I think it was pretty similar in the low and middle ISO range until, like I said, you hit that second base ISO of 6400 on the Z6 III. And once you get up into the higher ISO range, you can definitely see much more of a difference here where the Z6 Mark III is clearly doing a better job than the Blackmagic 6 full frame as expected. Next up, we'll take a look at the Nikon Z6 Mark III against the Fuji X-H2S, and I decided to record both of these in ProRes 422 HQ because that's the best internal codec in the Fuji camera and it has the same codec in the Nikon Z6 III. So there is built-in noise reduction here on the Z6 III, and like I said earlier, I have the standard noise reduction settings on the X-H2S. The X-H2S has a base ISO of 1250, so we'll start there. In the lower ISO range, they look pretty similar, but the Nikon having that smearier looking noise from the noise reduction that we were talking about before, the X-H2S noise is finer and it looks better in my opinion. In that middle range at 3200, 4000, and 5000, the X-H2 looks better here in terms of the noise performance. Of course, when you hit 6400, the Nikon cleans up when it hits the second base ISO. And above 6400, there's more chroma noise on the Nikon, but you can definitely see the noise reduction, the Fuji kicking in 
to give less detail. You can definitely see this with the smoothing of my face and just losing some of the detail. The ISO on the X-H2S does top out at 12,800, so we'll stop the test there. Now, I've always liked the noise pattern in the X-H2S. Like I said, it has a more fine and natural look to it. And like I said, I usually have the noise reduction turned down all the way to not have that smoothing look in the X-H2S. All right, so what are my conclusions and takeaways? Decent high ISO performance from the Z6 III, especially since this has a partially stacked CMOS sensor and it's not a BSI or backside illuminated sensor. BSI sensors definitely help with higher ISOs and because this camera does not have a BSI sensor, I was really impressed with this performance. Having that second base ISO at 6400 is very helpful for that super high ISO range. But like I said earlier, I wish it was a little bit lower, like. 3,200 or 4,000, where you see that in cameras like the R5C. I'm working on more deep dive videos about the Z6 Mark III, so if you are interested in that kind of stuff or other cool videos about cameras and lenses, please consider hitting subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.